second talk of POS Hack 2020. So uh, before we start, we'll wait for five minutes to you know uh, join other participants, and we'll start around 5:10 p.m. Yeah, so we'll wait for a few minutes, and those who are here, you know, like uh, ask your members, community members, to join us. And we have just Kirat today. Just Kirat today. He'll be talking about how to get started with open source. So uh, you can share the link, live uh, YouTube live link in your community. Thanks. Uh, so we'll wait for five minutes, then we'll go live. Uh, till then, uh, you can say us hi in the chat section. Uh, also, uh, like so that I can uh, understand. Okay, you are listening to me. So we will wait for a few more minutes and then we will start. So yeah, I think uh, we should start. So good evening, and welcome everyone today for the second talk of Fast Hack 2020. So this is hack. This is organized by Fast United. So Fast United is not for profit organization which aims to build fast projects coming out of India. And so uh, at Fast United, our aim is to support. Uh, fast contributors and uh, you know connect with fast communities and help them to build uh, as many as fast projects uh, we can we could quality fast projects more specifically so uh, today we have the skirat singh so he is 20 years old fast enthusiast so who has built code you know so he will be talking more about that uh, so okay uh, the talk will be around for 40 minutes and uh, we can go for a q and a for the rest 20 uh, and then uh, i would like to hand over the mic to jaskirat not mic actually so yeah jaskirat go ahead hi vishal thank you uh, for inviting me today it's pleasure indeed to be here so hi everybody so i'm jaskirat as my name reflects so 
I'm an open source research strategist and activistic community management specialist developing new and improving existing computer based technologies. And I usually help organize uh, various uh, events. I basically in more towards the, like I'm more towards uh, research and product management. So I basically help many other organization building their products, using them and outreaching for them. So like I have been into mentorship programs a lot. Like I have been uh, administrating and mentoring many young minded people across the globe. I have been a mentor in the Google Summer of Code, Google Coding and like, uh, like MH uh, like some program and recently I'm working with the Linux Foundation mentoring program too. So yeah, it's pretty well like I've been into open source since around like when I was uh, 14 years ago. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so moving ahead, like today, uh, I would be fostering around about the open source. So my talk would be around like, uh, what is exactly the open source and how open source changed my life. So I'm, I'm sure like it's gonna be pretty awesome. So, okay, so open source uh, is, I'm sure like many of you would be using many of the open source tools. You might also be engaging with my, many open source organizations, uh, but open source is exactly uh, what you think. So it's a source code, which is developed by, uh, which, is, which is developed by the developer community and made for the developer community. So it's, it's around like open source is just having around like having their source code open. So source code is something like, this is managed by some passionate developers and passionate communities. And this is the source code, which is made uh, available uh, for the end users to use, to contribute, and who also can be modified to. And this is something like use, contribute, modify, and grow while working with the open source and open source community. So trust me, open source is really fun and you should always experience it like working with the open source communities. Okay, so here comes like why contributing to open source is that much important. So uh, talking about like if you are a college student or a high school student, so open source is something which might be important for you at an initial stage. So it provides you with some real world software development experience uh, where you can uh, you know, like you can experience working with the with the uh, amazing projects like how to go with the projects and how to. Uh, you know, like modify them, how to use them. You also get a chance to collaborate and to understand a workflow of any project and the open source community. So uh, flow of the open source is not pretty much same uh, with the, which is like, uh, which is not pretty much same is like the corporate uh, company, but it's something which is, which is, which has got some other experience and you should always experience it because uh, having some collaboration stuff inside the open source would help you and reach your skills. So coming next to the, uh, like you can also use the open source ecosystem to test out your own skills. Uh, it helps you to drill up your own skills, like whatever you go around, whatever you avail, whatever you grab the knowledge while learning out the stuff. So this is where exactly which, uh, where you can uh, experience by contributing and it's, it's sort of like, it's, it can help you to drill up your own skills. And then lastly, you get to know about the, uh, community bonding so you you get to understand the community environment so like how the things happen inside the uh, any of the community what workflows do they follow what behavior do they follow so contributing to the open source has got many advantages so it is also something which can prepare you for your upcoming career growth or upcoming the uh, some job requirements so Whenever you're gonna apply for the jobs, it also gonna be a beneficial for you if you have a open source mention on your CV. So yeah, it's pretty well amazing. Okay, so now the question comes to how to dive into a con uh, like how to dive into the open source actually. So uh, like how to exactly contribute. So every open source project and the organization have their uh, things posted on the GitHub. So if you are not aware about the GitHub and the Git, so I would suggest you to get aware of it since this is a core of contributing to open source. Many of the organization and uh, I mean like other projects too, they follow up the Git and the GitHub uh, tooling. So this is something which you should learn if you're not aware about. Then every organization and every Git uh, project have their code 
uh, hosted on the GitHub, which is which is also an open source uh, community organization, I would say. And so you should be good to check in with the GitHub, uh, I mean, like GitHub platform where you can check in uh, with the projects you are interested in to contribute. And this is really going to be amazing. But contributing to open source is, uh, comes with some, some more things tied with that. Uh, we have some readme, license, and the code of conduct, which is which are the core terms of the open source. So readme provides you with some the instruction manual of our specific project, giving a brief about you, the specific repository, like what directory it contains and how you can install a particular, uh, I mean like particular project into your local, how you can contribute. Then it, it has all the things uh, available, like it, it has all things mentioned over there. Uh, coming over to the license, uh, which is one of the most important thing in the open source. Uh, the open source project or the community which don't have an open source valid license, it doesn't mean like they are open source. Just opening up your source code doesn't mean that you are open source unless and until it has some valid open source license. So license plays a very important role because it lets you understand like whether this particular project can be used, can be modified, or can be I mean, like can be uh, created or can be shared in, in, in the customized way. So licensing plays a major role in understanding the open source stuff. Code of conduct again comes with the vital role. Like it has got the it has got its own insights in while working into the open source community. So code of conduct generally means like how exactly uh, you should like what exactly uh, you should follow up while uh, contributing to the open source. And it is something like it provides you like the act of behavior, general laws of a community. So what behavior you should follow while communicating or while collaborating or while following up the workflow while contributing to the open source community. So uh, there is always a workflow to follow uh, like to, while contributing towards the open source software. And I think like this, this is something which should be followed by anyone who is about to dive into the open source ecosystem. So we have a general timeline which defines you like how you should get, uh, I mean, like how you should get your hands contributing to the open source software. So it starts with the surfing around on the GitHub, uh, checking out the projects. Like the very first thing is like you should know about like what skills do you have, right? So like depending upon your skills and your knowledge, it it you are required to map up with the project's requirement. The GitHub is one of the awesome uh, platform which lets you sort out the things based on the uh, languages too. So based upon your the languages or the, the uh, knowledge you have, you, you can uh, sort out or filter out uh, like the project's repositories. Once you uh, have the checklist of the repository, uh, you are required to dive into a specific directory of it and you need to check in with the licensing. So like, as I mentioned, like licensing plays a very important role. So you need to check in with that, like whether that particular license is open source or if it's free to use or it can be shared with anyone because unless and until uh, they have a valid license, you, you should not be uh, contributing to it because oh, like licenses, as I mentioned, plays a very important role. Uh, so once you have these both the things check in like the third thing comes is the community guidelines to follow up within any community you are required to uh, you know like follow up the community guidelines or the community ethics which means like what all things uh, you should follow up while contributing to a community like i remember like when when i i first uh, entered into open source i used to dm a lot uh, many people like many community members so that is something which should not be followed because Generally, open source projects and the communities, uh, they prefer having the healthy communication and the collaboration while working with any of the existing or external contributor. So you should not DM unless and until it is private. So all these things uh, like is like gets mentioned up uh, inside the community guidelines and you should be, uh, you should get familiar with the community guidelines whenever you uh, want to contribute towards your open source project. Again, the code of conduct plays a very important role since code of conduct uh, makes you familiar with the laws generally, like what laws you need to follow and what happens when you avoid all those laws. So uh, laws, something is like uh, you need to 
get in like it's it's not allowed it's not really like the corporate laws but it's something like a community law which which are necessary for a specific open source ecosystem uh, so i think like these are the basic things once you have all the things uh, done like you you are familiar with all these things uh, readme plays the another important role and it helps you to get dive into the installation stuff so it's basically a manual instructions which will let you know like what's this specific projects all about and how to install the particular this project into your local machine so readme has everything mentioned over there it also mentions like how you can support a specific project too like being a sponsor uh, sponsor uh, contributor or like uh, helping and sharing with some other people so readme is also something which you need to get familiar with so i think like everything uh, i mean like basic foundation gets set up once you are done with all these things so then comes the while like getting your hands finally on the uh, writing a code or contributing so generally source code doesn't mean exactly writing a code right so the open source is it's it's um, like it's open to some design stuff also some any any type of contribution so it's not limited to the writing 100 lines of code and then committing so uh, you can uh, like moreover like many of the open source community they uh, organize their structure like whatever it may be be it the designing stuff or uh, be it some the other stuff so they generally organize all these things into the github itself so github is something which is which i would say is the central hub and if you are into tech your uh, your i would say like your direction should be towards the github because it's the one of the hub of controlling all the open source projects then comes the while you have everything installed on a local machine you are good to modify it uh, you are good to uh, solve good first issues which have like good first levels on the open issue on the github itself and once you are done with it uh, i am like you are good to go to submit your pull request and commit changes in the code repository so i think like, these are the basic uh, i mean like basic i would say basic terms which you need to get familiar with while serving around with open source so you should definitely try uh, contributing towards open source projects because as i mentioned like this gonna help you uh, test out your skills uh, this gonna help you uh, understand the workflows uh, before getting it prepared for the some other internships or the other uh, corporate jobs so make it happen so i'm sure like you gonna love it while contributing towards open source if you do not well this reminds me of the time uh, when i was into the open source i first stepped in into the open source so uh, i first entered into the open source at the age of 14 so it was like pretty interesting experience for me to understand the open source ecosystem because it was something new at the age of 14 to me so google codein was a place like where from where i got to know about the open source so google codein if you are not aware about so google codein is generally a uh, it is it is specifically a program run by google and it is specifically made for the pre university uh, students so uh, if you are into high school uh, you can be a part of these uh, this particular program though google is not running this program anymore because like they had a ending ceremony of this particular program uh, by, like last year itself so but this is something like where every open source project and not only every but many many open source projects participate in this program and google holds the rights to select uh, all the open source organization and the uh, i mean like projects which needs to get uh, participated in this program so this is this is something which is the uniqueness of this particular program and i being one of the uh, student like i i actually got to know about the open source by participating in this program it's like i first participated in this program at the age of 14 and i remember like uh, sugar labs was one of the my first organization where i contributed but i made a mistake uh, in this particular program and i got banned by program administrators to participate further in this specific program so this was a bad time for me where i actually got banned by the google administrators who run this program and i could not participate any further so a thing happened is like uh, when when i was when i first participated in this program uh, like i was always curious to know like curious to understand the uh, open source and always curious to avail all those swags by the google right so like i i remember like 
uh, in my high school, like there used to be uh, seniors who used to participate in this program, and they used to get lot many uh, swags by the Google, right? So, so those swags only fascinated me to be a part of this program. And in order to avail those swags, uh, I mean, like uh, we have to uh, do three tasks uh, for in this program, like which were like, like if you do some like uh, related to coding tasks, like though. They have five categories defined in this particular uh, program, but if you do some coding task that has a bonus always. So uh, like I was asked to do like three tasks in order to avail all those, uh, I'm like all those uh, swags by the Google. And and we all know like why, why, I mean like we all know like Google itself has a uh, like impactful name, which everyone wants to be, right? So like uh, as like others, like I was always curious to avail all the swags and in order to avail all the swag, I submitted three tasks where two tasks were coding tasks and one was related to the design, right? So I, I knew like uh, like at the age of 14, being from non-technical background, I don't have any knowledge of coding stuff, like what is coding is all about. Too. So what I did, like though I submitted uh, like design task uh, one, so and the other rest two tasks, which was which were related to the uh, coding tasks, so what I did, like I, I try to copy it, the uh, I mean like the coding task uh, from one from other students and submit it through my dashboard, right? So then I submitted the replicated task of the other students through my dashboard. Immediately after a few hours, like I got an email uh, by the program administrator itself stating that I have been uh, banned to participate further in this program and my account by which I participated in this program allowed in, in this program has been uh, I mean, like, has been frozen up well that was the uh, I mean like that was the bad feeling for me like that was the one of the worst feeling for me because that was a time because then I first dreamt of the uh, being a part of the Google specific uh, organization and after doing all these stupid nonsense things like I got banned from the participation of this program. But this was also a opportunity and a chance for me to understand like what is uh, I mean like what is the open source all about and what could I learn from this specific mistake. So I then I decided to step uh, I mean like participate in the Sugar Labs organization, the organization uh, from which I was like while I was contributing and to which I submitted the coding task like the replicated coding task. So I. Uh, figured out like I would be contributing to this specific organization irrespective of any of the program and I would be voluntarily contributing to it. So I tried to discuss this thing with my uh, like with, with, with other community members who were the core uh, members of the organization. I tried to explain the situation and luckily they admitted me to be a part of the community. Uh, so I started contributing to the community and this is something like which where I never stopped myself. So uh, Turtle Blocks, if you are not aware about like Sugar Labs is an educational project. So it, it is a project which is made for the kids and they have a specific uh, desktop, like operating system, like desktop environment uh, named as Sugar and it comes with a lot many applications. So I'm mean, like, it is it is really interesting uh, to surf around all these type of projects which uh, which provides with the, such environment working in the open source communities. So turtle, I remember the turtle blocks uh, was one of the my uh, first project where I contributed to. So turtle blocks is something is the inspired version of the logo. So turtle blocks, uh, I mean like turtle blocks again, like it's it's just like drag and drop. Uh, I mean like it's just drag and drop blocks, and you get to design some uh, some I mean like some art, some illustrations in it. And it is really interesting for the kids, right? So, like, this was a uh, my first project where I contributed to. So, I contributed uh, as a strategist uh, on this project. So, I tried to input uh, like what new features can be there and how we can improve this particular project. What more things can be there? And I also started teaching, like, like though uh, the the this this project is designed by this project is uh, made by one of the former director of the MIT, which is the Walter Brander. So I had a chance to interact with him and I luckily worked uh, closely with him. Uh, and I also started teaching this specific, uh, this specific project, I mean, specific 
environment uh, in many of the schools. I, I remember like I used to go in many of the schools uh, organizing events just to teach these turtle blocks because this is one of the visual programming uh, where the kids get to learn about the coding stuff, right? So, so while I was uh, teaching all this, I also learned a lot many things. So this was a time where I first interacted with a project. As I, as I said, like my contribution towards Sugar Labs was basically uh, to input some strategized work. I used to help in outreach, in providing some feedbacks, though I was not uh, like technically strong. Like I was not fully technically strong. I didn't know the coding stuff, but I was able to be a part of the community and contribute in as much way as can. While I was contributing, I contributed to the Sugar Labs organization for one or two years, and luckily I was I, I became the core member of the Sugar Labs community. And since then, I am still attached to the Sugar Labs community and working with them. So it's it's really amazing project. Then something unexpected happened with me, like I got the invitation to be a mentor in the Google Code in 2017. So Google Code is again the same program from which I was banned to participate further, right? So this reminds me of the time when uh, when I first participated in this program, right? So I also got the invitation to be a mentor in the Google Summer of Code. So Google Summer of Code is again an event run by the Google, uh, which is the where university students participate uh, for a three months program under the some uh, open source project or the organization, and they are paid some stipend, right? So. So luckily I had a chance to get invited uh, by the same program administrators by whom I was uh, I mean, like I was banned to be a part of this program. So I luckily had a chance to attend the Google Summer of Code Mentor Summit at California, US in one of the Google uh, complex. So this was amazing experience for me because I got to know about like what mistake I made and how I overcome that specific mistake. So, this is something I would always be uh, like following up in my life. And this, is, this also reminds me of a time like whenever you are, uh, when you are about to avail any specific thing, so you should not be after the thing like and do some uh, like gnostic stuff. So, so I think like whenever you have to do something, so you have to follow an actual path where you could contribute uh, in a better way and understand the stuff in a better sense. Yeah. So my contribution towards uh, Sugar Summer of Code has been as a mentor in the Sugar Labs. Like I served as a mentor for the Sugar Labs in uh, like in 2018, 2019, and still like I uh, I contributed, not only really contributed, but I served as a mentor for two uh, one of the projects uh, in 2022. So I had been a part of the JWAS community, which is a community under the Red Hat in 2019. And I'm currently administrating for the coding organization, which is under the Terrasology Foundation. Like we, though we applied, like we have been applying independently. Like I also run my own organization, which is named as Codino. And though we tried to apply it, uh, like uh, as an independent organization, but unluckily, like we could not get accepted. So we had a chance to be a part of it under the Terrasology Foundation. So we had two students this year, like who really uh, did a great job, like converting our projects into a better phase area. So yeah, so we I really had a like great time contributing towards Sugar Labs as well as the uh, Google Summer of Code program. So here are some glimpses of the uh, Google Code and the Google Summer of Code program. Like I was uh, like every other student like who participated in the Google Code program, we were given a certification like to be a part of it. And then I also this was the email like which I received when I first for the invitation to be a mentor at the Google Summer of Code under the Sugar Labs com, uh, organization by the Walter Bander. Well, this is again the interesting here. It comes the final stage thing, like which for which I was always waiting for and for which I actually got banned uh, in the Google Coding program. So I received a letter uh, to be a part of uh, Google Mentor Summit, which was held at one of the Google complex at California, USA. So I also received a lot of many swags too. So it's it's gonna be it's this these were the program administrators like whom I interacted with there, and they are really great people. Like they they have been running uh, the many open source programs uh, like Google Code and Google Season of Docs to Google Summer of Code, and like they have been working tirelessly to make these programs a successful uh, 
completion right so like they they are really amazing like i i had a better chance to interact with them and share the same journey uh, which i'm going to which i'm sharing currently so i really had a pleasure uh, working with them under the google summer of code while i was at google mentor summit 2018 i i had a chance to uh, attend one of the session um, by the uh, tech writer of the google uh, where they they were about to launch uh, another program named as google season of dogs so like it was pretty uh, like interesting session when i entered it, uh, attended over the years and i think like this was a time when like this 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 was something interesting for me because uh google seasonal docs is a program which is open for tech writers like research tech writers who wants to contribute towards the uh, I mean, like the open source projects and it is specifically uh, towards the open source communities right so like i was luckily enough to uh, convince like uh, this particular program into uh, like towards the open collective while i was uh, one of the contributors so while like i was able to convince this uh, to participate in this particular program towards the uh, open collective core team members so we had a two uh, i mean like, we we got uh, two people but out of which we have to select only one so we had uh, anna who uh, worked with us uh, i mean like who actually uh, contributed towards the open collective docs uh, changing it a new way and i i was uh, working with one of the other uh, administrator uh, which is the elana and she is from new zealand like she she was uh, she held a lot like uh, towards the tech writer and changing it in a new phase well at the age of uh, 17 it inspired me to uh, start with my own organization so at the age of 17 i started uh, with my own organization named scodino so while i was uh, working around like i always wanted to know like how and uh, how and exactly like the open source not not really open source but how social uh, media platforms are made right so like if i talk about like facebook the twitter or the uh, linkedin like how these uh, platforms are made and i always wanted to know the behind scenes of it like what if we could have uh, a platform of our own and i tried brainstorming more ideas and i tried to research around like what if we can provide this particular thing to the communities the external communities and projects and so i think like this this was the time and which is something which convinced me uh, to start with the organization in the code you know and i luckily had a chance to interact with many of the developers many of the other researchers who helped me out start with the projects in this and Yes, so we we currently have three projects under Codino, which is like the social media platform, which is named as Donut. We also have uh, the, I mean, like the second project named as Pansberry, which is another community forum project, which provides you the access to customize your project. I mean, like uh, the forum in your own way, and it comes with a better project management tool. And uh, we also have the third project named as Code Batch, uh, which is something. uh helps to measure the health of a contributor so it's it's a project which basically defines like it uh, the health of any of the co- contributors who is working for a specific co- community and it's it's so all these projects like all these three projects are uh, limited to the uh, community oriented uh, projects so uh, i mean like we we have a slack uh, channel to like where we communicate on a regular basis uh, you can join this slack channel by uh like by following up the link named as xlack.codino.org like and uh, we we are currently also participating in the linux foundation mentorship program which i would be talking uh, in the further slides so yeah so uh like as i mentioned like i started this organization at the age of 6 17 and uh, i i luckily like this year i had a chance to uh, interact with the vp of the linux foundation and i after interacting with the linux foundation like my after pitching my idea i had a chance to work uh, collaboratively with them uh, though uh, we were not able to successfully be a part of the linux foundation projects directly but uh, we had a chance to be a part of the linux foundation uh, collaboration right so uh, we we raised some funding uh, from the next foundation for our five mentees under the next foundation mentorship program 
so if you are interested to be a part of linux foundation community mentorship program you can apply like we are currently accepting applications too for our second cohort and this is a paid opportunity this, this runs similar to the gsoc uh, where the where you are paid some stipend uh, based upon your location and stipend ranges from $3000 to uh, $6000 so definitely you should give a try so if you if you want to check in with any of the information if you want to seek some help ping me up anytime i'm always available on the some twitter handles or uh, like facebook or linkedin i'm always available on the social handles too so uh, just ping me up anytime like i would be able to assist you in this particular thing so yeah i also had a chance to uh, get interviewed by the linux foundation so uh, linux foundation like i i shared uh, the knowledge of the open source uh, social networking so basically how i got engaged with this particular community and why what it made me to start with this organization and what uh, what problem is it solving uh, with this product so if you want to check in with this uh, particular interview about me just you can uh, just type in like meet donut uh, on youtube and you're going to have a first link uh, just which going to be on my interview so give it a shot yeah So yeah, so that's it. Like you can connect with me anywhere. Like I'm always available on social handles, be it the Twitter or LinkedIn or the GitHub. So you can ping me up for any updates you want, and I'm sure like I, I'm gonna help you out. Thank you. So I'm available for ask me anything uh, questions. So I, I would be seeking some help from Vishal. Um, uh, am I uh, audible to you? Just correct. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. cool uh, so that was really a nice introduction uh, and to open you know how to start with open source in different ways so i think uh, the audience have got the idea and as as also he mentioned if you have if you need some if you need some clarification regarding anything you can uh, always reach out to him on his uh, social media i mean account of course so uh, now uh, like i think uh, we have got some questions uh, through or okay if someone have some you know questions you can ask in the live chat section on the youtube itself so we can ask uh, like direct to just kiran so we have got one question uh, from tushar so tushar is asking i have uh, been developing for mobile till now and want to start off with web so how to start and you know how to start and from where to start okay so he is asking for resources you know how to how you can start with web technologies like contribution okay sounds good so uh, like whenever you want to start any new thing i would always suggest you to uh, i mean like grab some knowledge from already existing uh, available resources like there are many resources available on the internet where you can have uh you can grasp the knowledge of a specific uh, thing which you are looking for so just uh, availing a basic knowledge about it uh, you should i think like open source again uh, is the best uh, way to get uh, test out your skills so you should uh, get involved with any of the open source project which matches with your skills or which which requires uh, basically uh, the things which you are looking for and the other thing is like you should like while you would be contributing to the open source you will also have a, a better chance to understand any specific code base for a, a like amazing projects so i think like after uh, availing some knowledge from the uh, already uh, existing websites or existing resources uh, you can jump in to the open source projects and you can contribute towards it to in order to uh, drill out your skills yeah yeah so i got some idea so yeah uh, i think we have only this question so cool uh, yeah i think uh, we have uh, not much questions from the audience and so actually this was really uh, you know great session uh, just here for the beginners to introduce you know to to start with open source and i think uh, okay so that, that was uh, pretty much so okay thank you guys again uh, to you know come here and join us today for today's talk and uh, also you might be knowing fourth hack is happening uh, next saturday sunday i mean coming saturday sunday uh, 12 13 september 
So if you haven't joined or registered, go and check out our link. I'll share in the comment section here, uh, or I'll share right now. Or uh, you can also, uh, yeah. So okay, I'll I'll share the link within a bit. So uh, apart from fast hack, uh, like we have also uh, talked during the hackathon from uh, speakers like Sakti Kanan. So you can also join for our further talks and. For those who are uh, like already registered, you can start creating projects and joining projects on the Hackathon portal of Fast Hack. So you have been a wonderful audience, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, just Kirat, for coming here and helping the audience out to get started with open source. And thank you, everybody. So bye bye. Till then, see you. Thank you. Thank you very much.